Hey guys, Jim Grant here for Ammo Land TV, and today we're taking a closer look at this Italian stallion, the A300 Patrol from Beretta. It is Beretta's newest shotgun. It was announced at SHOT Show, and I have had a chance to put several hundred rounds of buckshot through it, and thus far am very impressed. Now, if you're like a lot of shooters out there, your relationship with semi-automatic shotguns is probably a very mixed one. You either absolutely love them and think they're God's gift to shooters, or you think they're the worst thing ever made because they never run reliably. And oftentimes they're really expensive and they're really heavy. And what's awesome is this Beretta is none of those things. So is this new Beretta tactical shotgun enough to steal away the market and bring people to the dark side of auto-loading shotguns? Well, let's take a closer look at the Beretta A300 Patrol and find out. The new A300 Patrol is a gas-operated, semi-automatic shotgun chambered in 12 gauge and it can feed up to three inch shells. Speaking of feeding, it feeds from an integral tube magazine beneath the barrel that holds seven plus one rounds of ammunition. But the gun is more than just your average auto loader, so let's start at the muzzle and work our way back, get all the proper details before we get into our actual review. All right, starting at the muzzle, the A300 Patrol ships with a 19.1 inch smooth barrel, which like most Beretta shotguns, is threaded internally at the muzzle for its Moby choke pattern of chokes, and it ships with both a wrench and an improved cylinder choke in the box. Above the muzzle, you'll notice a very attractive red fiber optic front sight with a pair of protective wings to prevent you from accidentally dropping the gun on concrete and smashing said fiber optic. Just behind this, the Beretta shotgun incorporates a barrel clamp that adds both extra rigidity to the extended magazine tube, and thus a little bit of extra ruggedness, and a QD sling mount at the front. Further back, the forearm is made of polymer and features some incredibly aggressive checkering on it. I mean, like, we're talking cheese grater slash skateboard tape. It is really, really tough. And at the front of that handguard is three sets of M-lock slots at the three, six, and nine o'clock positions for mounting lights, lasers, or both, or a bayonet, whatever you want to put on there. It's fantastic. Just behind the forearm, the A300 Patrol's receiver includes a short Picatinny rail for mounting optics, which is a great inclusion. And one thing of note, if you intend to run a reflex sight on this gun, you should try to pick one that mounts too low to co-witness traditionally with AR-15 sights. So you want to get something that's more of like a PDW style mount or an extra low mount for like an RMR like I did. Now just behind this Picatinny rail is a fixed aperture sight, AKA a ghost ring, which makes finding that brilliantly bright red fiber optic sight an absolute breeze. But let's get into ergonomics. Beneath the optics rail, the Breda A300 Patrol uses a ribbed extended charging handle attached to the bolt that makes racking the action fairly easy. I mean, personally, I would have preferred something a little bit oversized, maybe like a giant gnarled knob or whatever, but it's a tactical shotgun, not a competition shotgun, so you don't want this thing to stick out three and a half feet and get snagged on equipment or your car door or whatever. So, I mean, it really does strike a very good balance of usability and as well as portability. Now directly underneath the charger, the bolt release lever on the gun is damn near perfect. It is large enough to easily find and manipulate in the dark, but not so large that you would accidentally engage it while either manipulating the gun or carrying the gun on a sling or storing the gun or trying to put it into like a rifle rack or whatever in a patrol car. Further back, the gun uses a crossbar safety, which is located just at the front of the trigger guard, much like a Remington 870. I liked it. As far as the trigger pull, it felt about four and a half pounds, very light, very crisp, fantastic. Now just behind the action, the A300 Patrol uses the same aggressively textured polymer featured on the forearm to give shooters a very positive purchase on the gun, but one that will arguably tear up your hands without gloves with extended use. But all things considered, I'd rather have sore hands than a dropped gun. Plus the polymer will wear in with time and become a little bit more smooth. Lastly, the stock itself comes with several interchangeable spacers, so everyone from like a five foot nothing shooter like my mom to literal orangutans can find a comfortable medium or a comfortable fit with this stock. But here's the kicker. The felt recoil of the new A300 Patrol is remarkable. I don't know if I'm just new to Beretta shotguns. I mean, I know I am, but I don't know if this is why I'm so surprised by it, but it seems to defy logic. Truth be told, I'm fairly certain the engineers at Beretta must have captured one of those alien UFOs people keep talking about and reverse engineered part of it to make this gun. Because I tested the gun almost exclusively with full powered double lot buck and I could blast merrily through 150 rounds without feeling sore or having my shoulder all bruised to hell. It was just incredible. I mean, if the gun weighed 15 pounds, I could completely understand it. All right, yeah, sure, it's, it's simple physics, but the gun's definitely not 15 pounds. In fact, it only tips the scales at a measly seven pounds, two ounces, but it kicks like a 20 gauge autoloader. And initially I couldn't really figure out how, given how light it was, 
but as I looked into it, it's a result of the gun's combination of a properly tuned gas system along with their kickoff recoil reduction system, which in a the broadest terms is essentially just a series of hydraulic pistons, actually two sets of them, in the stock that are also cushioned with rubber padding. So basically it's redirecting and decelerating some of that recoil impulse that would normally go directly into the shooter's shoulder and giving it some time to kind of mellow out before it actually impacts your shoulder. The result is a gun that you can shoot all day. And truth be told, most shooters don't go out to the range and blast through 200 rounds of buckshot because well, we're not Donald Trump, but can't afford that kind of ammo. But thankfully, the folks at Beretta were kind enough to supply me with a half case of Federal's flight control buckshot, and it worked fantastically. But I was not content to simply rest on my laurels and believe that, yeah, it works good with everything, because I tested it with the one ammo that was included by the supplier. That would be uh, ethically questionable. So what I did was I ran some of my personal home defense ammo, which is Hornaday's Critical Defense Double Lock Buck, and it ran fantastic. I also ran a couple of slugs from Duplex, that's with two Ds, and it ran great, although those things still have a substantial amount of recoil. And then I ran some of my go-to Winchester Universal Number 8 shot. Uh, this is what I use for competition, three gun and whatnot ammunition, and guess what? It still ran. In fact, the only ammunition that I had any issues with in terms of reliability was utilizing some of the Herder's low recoil ammo, but truth be told, I've never seen a semi-automatic shotgun of any variety that could ever run that ammo. I mean, I'm sure it's possible if we opened up the gas system to something absurd, but for 99.9% .9 of shotguns out there, they just can't run this ammo. And it's not indicative of a design flaw, obviously. I mean, it's a specialty ammo type. Still, it's very telling that the gun could run with everything else, and I was incredibly pleased. And as were the other shooters that I had come out and tested with me. I've had multiple people ask if they could buy it from me after putting a dozen rounds through it. Now, as far as accuracy, I mean, it's a shotgun. It doesn't really have precision so much as patterning. But that being said, I was still very impressed by its patterning with the included improved cylinder choke. Because at 30 yards, I was able to very reliably knock down steel plates. And at 20, the gun would hit them so hard, it would damn near break them in half. So as a home defense tool or a tactical entry tool, this is perfect. Any kind of target you would ever encounter indoors would be absolutely obliterated by a single shot of this because your patterning is gonna be the size of a closed fist and that's a lot of lead to bring to bear. So what's my verdict? Well, with an MSRP of around 1100 bucks, the new Beretta A300 Patrol is the budget-friendly auto-loading tactical shotgun we've always wanted. You get to have the Ferrari performance of a Beretta auto-loader Eh, without the price tag. So as someone who really loves his Benelli M4, if this existed back when I bought the M4 and I wasn't a collector of military firearms, this would be a much more attractive option because it's a fraction of the price and I could spend the rest of that money on training and ammunition. Anyway, for Ammo Land TV, I'm Jim Grant. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I will catch you guys on the flip side.